I know this is only a modest sized channel, but together we've created a small but vibrant community. And from you, every day, I receive lots and lots of messages. And perhaps the most thought provoking, and indeed, maybe the saddest, are those that come from someone, someone working hard, maybe with modest tools, little space, maybe no help and advice. Someone who's had a go at making a bow and in their view has failed. I freely admit to a feeling of sadness when I read of someone who feels they've reached the end of their bow making road, have given up on their dream of making bows. The reasons are many, but the outcome is nearly always the same. A feeling of failure. It can be their one and only piece of bow wood that pushed them over the edge because it quickly became a broken bow or a disastrous tiller that was impossible to recover. It can even be a struggle to find wood, a seemingly endless and fruitless search for timber from which to make a bow. And there are some who have nowhere, an exasperating shortage of space in which to craft a bow, yet others who have no tools or money to afford them, and some who have no one to turn to for advice and guidance, no one to lend eyes and hands to the task in hand. And there are some, in fact many, whose responsibilities to family, life and work can't justify the selfish and long hours needed to bend wood. Faced with obstacles in a busy world where making a springy piece of timber into a bow has little place, use or understanding, these budding bowyers give up and consider their efforts to have been in vain to be a failure, and some write to me in sadness to let me know. This is my 30th month making bows, but notice I didn't say this is my 30th month as a bowyer, because I too have doubts about my abilities. Maybe I just got lucky, maybe I can't really make bows, maybe I am a failure. So should I give up making bows? But I say this to myself. I was born into a world that values modern technology, which increasingly gives the ordinary man and woman access to the most amazing opportunities and life skills. But in the process, our hands and eyes have forgotten the crafts that they acquired across millennia. The ability to work wood, to use tools, to accurately gauge with fingers a constant taper along a bow limb, to see weakness and strengths in a bow state, to have the affinity with one of nature's most awesome products, wood has been lost by most of us. So for many, just rediscovering these abilities is a life's work. And if we have to self-teach our hands and eyes, so it seems it will take much, much longer than the time we actually have. So is it really a puzzle that I still have frustrations with certain aspects of bow making, when in fact, I've had to learn everything from scratch? So is there anything that we can do about this? First, Let's get things in context. We're merely bending pieces of wood. It's not necessarily a career. It's not necessarily that important that we're successful straight away. So in my 30 months making bows, is there anything I've learned that can help you if you're feeling close to that edge, to failure, or have already come to the conclusion that you've failed as a bow maker? Well, yes, if there's one thing I've figured out in my 60 plus years, it's this, that we can't all be good at everything. Some are gifted, some are not. And there the struggle begins, because we've chosen to pursue the skill, the art and the craft of a bowyer. And it doesn't come naturally. It's not a gift that we all have. It's not a gift that I've got. And there is the problem. We're trying to learn something, often alone, often without guidance, often without the right tools or wood, often without the right workspace or support. And we've chosen something that's difficult, that doesn't come naturally. Is it any wonder that occasionally, some of us, me included, come to the conclusion that we've failed as a bowyer? So for many of us, making a bow seems like a mysterious craft, well beyond our grasp. But there is one thing that is within our grasp, and it lies at the heart of 
probably the best piece of advice I was ever given in business. Maybe the best piece of advice with which to go through life. And it's simple. It's just two words. And they are keep going. Because it's not just the gifted that create. It's not just naturals that do amazing things. Most often, the prize is won by those who have kept going. So after 30 months of making and breaking bows, this is what I've learned. That we're setting ourselves a challenge that many of us will find really, really difficult to accomplish. It requires a feel for a material that most of us have to learn and learn the hard way. It needs an ability to guide tools that rely entirely on our hands and eyes. And this is not something that comes easy. It requires a persistence to find materials, to create even the tiniest space in which to work, to juggle life and family and kids so that somehow there is a bit of time to learn the craft of making bows. And so you might well struggle, as I have and still do, but there is only one answer. Don't give up. Keep going. Keep working at making those bows. The answer is not the wood, it's not the workspace, it's not the tools. It's in here and in your heart. It's keeping going, it's keeping trying. There'll be anguish, there'll be fear, there'll be worries, there'll be stress, there'll be problems, breakages, failures if you want to call them that. But failure is just a component of success. Keep going and you will succeed in making a bow. It may be wonky, it may not be right, but it will be a bow. Keep going, don't give up. I didn't, and neither should you.